You are watching The Shrine of Chaos. This is a preview of things to come. The reason why I am speaking to you this way right now is just to make sure that all of the audio is working for all the various platforms we are streaming to. We're streaming to Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope. Looks like everyone is good. We're still sending data to Twitch. Hopefully we can get all the viewers coming in. And look at that. It all works just like how we want it. That is perfect. This is an image of one of the uh, models that these lovely guests have painted. In case you didn't know, the guests today are Marco and Alexandra from Craft World Studio. And they're ridiculously awesome. I just have to say, I was stumbled across them one day and I saw them on Instagram and I saw the stuff and I'm like, come on, seriously, what, what is this? What is this stuff? What, why, why is it that stuff like this exists that's just like burning my eyeballs with awesomeness? I, I got to reach out. I have to talk to them. And so that's what I did. I reached out to them and they were gracious enough to, to be guests on the Shrine of Chaos. And uh, right, looking at some of your comments now, this is amazing. And yes, it is crazy. Right, and this is just one of the many that they have on there, and they have a very particular style, which we're going to dive into in their interview in just a moment. Um, so, without further ado, here we have Alexandra and Marco. Hey, guys. Hi. Hey. Now, first and foremost, uh, so where are you guys from? From Serbia. From Serbia. Okay, very cool. Mm -hmm. And it's not not Siberia, Serbia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I have I have to ask because that is literally how I found you guys. I found you on Instagram. I saw I was just scrolling through some stuff. I happened to see one of your pictures, uh, and I'm and I I clicked on it and I saw more of your pictures and I saw more of the artwork. Like uh, th going back to this night here for just a second. Uh, I mean, there's a very particular style because I'm looking at the colors here and there's. Like, am I looking at 10,000 colors there in the armor? Like, it, it's a crazy, it's a crazy amount of, of color. Like, it's just the color explosion that you guys use. So your, your style sticks out. Uh, so just some questions for you guys, just first off, uh, because I, I know very little about you guys personally. Uh, and I, uh, when we had our test call before to, to set up, I purposefully didn't ask you many questions because I wanted to ask you in the interview. And so, um, because uh, I don't know. All I know is the pictures that I see and then now that I've met you two. So is it both of you that are doing the painting? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we are working, we have a um, few of the projects we work together on, but also we are working on our projects. So, so yes, yeah, so, so far we had only, I think, four or five projects that we work together. Okay. But mostly we work on separate stuff. Yeah. Now, are your painting styles similar? Well, in, in the beginning, it went maybe more similar than now, even if it's probably for many people, it looks very similar, but when they follow more and more, they can mm -hmm. see the difference. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the technique is, is, the technique is very similar. similar, but I think because when you also in, in canvas paintings, so it's in a miniature painting is the same that uh, it really depends on your character and personality, personality. Yeah. so you want to depict that so of course mine will be different than hers even though we have similar technique mm -hmm. the the style will shape on in a way we our our personality and our basically our persona is okay so that comes out in your artwork is basically what what i'm gathering from that uh so going back to this night for a second uh Tell me about this picture, or tell me about this uh, model that you painted. Uh, first off, who painted this? Did you both? Did one? Like, who worked on this one particularly? This is the knight with the uh, the blonde. Yeah, that, yeah well, that's that's my work. <clears throat> I actually started that work the last day we went. Uh, we went in Australia in the beginning of the year to hold classes, and I started that model basically in uh, last hours of our visit, I had a quick uh, coaching with a friend there. So I just started there and go completely, you know, wild. 
So I guess that's that's why he is so colorful and so magical because sometimes when you are in a, in a short have a short deadline and you want to show a lot of stuff you go very quick yeah. quickly through it and then that maybe that's why he shaped like he is wow okay so because i'm getting i've seen some comments here and uh, and i agree with some of the comments with they're saying that it looks like a painting as opposed to mm -hmm. a painted model it does look like a painting when i when i look at that uh and that and so okay this this model right here is that a bust like how big is that in real life yeah this one i think uh, uh is there my hand i think you can you can measure the size by my i'm not sure on this picture. maybe not on that so it's basically i think like hmm, well, less than 10 centimeters less, less, less. than like eight so, in the height yes yeah, so it's like four inches like something like that yeah. Yeah. yeah something something like that yeah okay yeah. but okay. still still big enough where you can have a good amount of detail and color on it but small enough where it's uh it takes a yeah, certainly it, it, a crazy amount of skill yeah. so what's your what's your background because it's i mean if someone were to just pick up and start painting like uh what what is the like do you have schooling in painting yeah we, we are both uh applied artists yeah we actually met on the yeah. art college <laughs> okay <laughs> No, and and I, I'm industrial designer and she's graphic designer. Okay. So, yeah, next to the traditional arts, we both studies uh, applied arts because yeah. um, it, it is something we can use and we're using it also mm. in our daily yeah. page. Yeah. So running the page. If yeah, it, 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 it helps us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it all, it's all helpful in what we're doing today. And so what got you, okay, so you're both artists, that's your background, you, you took it in school mm -hmm. in, in various, uh, various uh, studies, and, uh, mm -hmm. and then you apply that to, to miniatures. So what got you into painting miniatures? Well, uh, for, for me, it started with uh, video games, Warhammer games, uh, because uh, Warhammer scene is not that big in, in, in our country. And first, I found out about the Dawn of War and 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 other other uh, video games that are based in in Warhammer universe. So I was really hyped about that. But then I find out that there are miniatures, and I want to collect them, but I couldn't find anywhere to buy them. So, but eventually, uh, a friend on college he showed me and introduced me to some miniatures, and that's how I fell in love with them okay and but, then i met marco and yeah. his friend and they told me all about horus heresy <laughs> <laughs> and then i fell in love with this universe so. <laughs> awesome i love it so was it the lore then that the kind of drew you in yeah yeah um, yeah I, I really like the the yeah that the, that's the the main reason why we really love warhammer universe is because of the stories and the lore and the uh characters and and just the, the it, um, it's very cool and unique so okay i'm going to turn to a picture here just to show some people so this is archeon and uh <laughs> i've never i haven't seen an archeon painted this way so what's the what's the inspiration behind the color choices so um when uh, i painted archeon uh, i focused for this time uh, for him to be more uh, uh, shaped in a tinge, in a, sorry, slanesh favor. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were all three heads for tinge, corn, and uh, Nurgle. Nurgle. So I didn't have a slanesh there. And I wanted uh, this model to depict the might of slanesh also, even without the head of the yes, um, yeah. god. So um, I went with many many of the pink values in all the colors used so that was the main inspiration behind this piece okay okay yeah. awesome uh and so what what are some techniques that we're looking at here so what, what what are some techniques you used to achieve this here so um we can call it to make it more um visible now like uh, a lot of freehand 
So there are all the lines that I draw and uh, textures. There is no metallic metal. So that is uh, the metallic parts on the beast uh, that are done in non-metallic yeah. style. And um, hmm. the, shield. the shield is also uh, with freehand and the uh, glowing effect, like making uh, the well, the, the, the heat of oil cells and burning. If, if, if you want, <laughs> it's a bit difficult to explain. Like our techniques is not like typical techniques that are just technical in the way, you, you know, you can put the, the, the etiquette of this is dry brush, this is, I don't know. Yeah, uh, mo, mo, yeah. That, that's uh, for us, it's all painting. So when I say freehand or non-metallic, for me personally, it's just painting. But in miniature painting yeah. and art, we call it with these names because it's easier to explain what I'm doing. But yeah. uh, there, uh, the technique is all the same on all parts. It's just painting using the um, maybe sometimes wet blending, maybe yeah. sometimes layering. Uh, yeah, a, a lot, a lot, basically a lot of layering. Yeah, and playing with contrast, shadows, and highlights. So when you decide the, the, the light source or the ambience, then you just need to focus on how that light will reflect the other colors around the piece. And it, it might look a bit uh, overwhelming, but it becomes natural after you, after you use it for a while. So basically when we, when we take a piece, a model, and then we set the ambience, we know that the shadows will be maybe cold and the ambience will be cold and we realize maybe the highlight can be a bit warmer so you get stronger contrast and so yeah. on. So it's it's basically, uh, we before start painting, we already have some some idea how that could look in, uh, in advance. Yeah, when we're painting. So how long would it take, like this one in particular, how long did it take to paint Archeon from start to finish? Hmm. Well, it took me some longer time, but <laughs> I don't know exactly because I worked on few projects at the moment. Okay. So, but I think it could take um, mm -hmm. a month, maybe yeah. less if I'm painting only that. Yeah, it could take less, but usually we don't want to burn out. So we, if we feel something is too much, we skip. Yeah, but some uh, days and in in our occasion, most usually we we really paint every time on few few projects mm. so we never know how many time we we spend on one of them okay and i think it's it's better for us not to know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess that's true right because then you might look at a model and you'd be like "Ooh, okay that one that'll take me 100 hours that that'll take yeah. me 200 yeah it might be like seeing that at the beginning might be uh, you know kind of harder yeah but also, also depends, like when we start some even bigger project at the beginning, it goes faster because you're excited and then you reach one point where you, it just, you know, you already shaped the whole model. So you put all the colors, you put everything, but then you need to do the refining and some smoothening and adding some contrast or, 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 or something. And then you feel like it's getting slower and slower because it's not that visible. There is not much change, but you know you need to finish it. Right. So you you lose some of the motivation. Okay, so I'm gonna open it up to uh, the viewers just for a moment here. Uh, I'm gonna show a picture. Here's a new one. Uh, looks like a Necromunda gang. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think. <laughs> It's actually, uh, they are created in their own 40K universe. I mean, it's still pretty much 40K, the, the, the classic one, but the whole planet uh, have its different lore. So, okay. so basically they, they are trapped on, on a, a far world that is cut out from the Imperium so that the, they don't have any support and the planet basically... Uh, drones people to it so they get trapped yeah and then like they're living in in, in the in the 
in, in the destroyed spaceships that are fell on the on the on the ground. So basically, the, the towns are the scrapyards of 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 the spaceships, and that's the only uh, community there. Okay. Most of the planet is wild, and there is. I mean, I can talk about <laughs> it all night. But, oh, that's cool. But, I love it. I love how there's narrative behind the squad, and it, and it makes and, sense. Yes, so 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 it, it is kind of uh, even if like a space marine or like inquisitor he had his uh, views, but then when you are faced with the situation, you have to compromise. You have to to use your own needs to survive and to endure, and then hopefully get back home or like connect with with the rest of the Imperium. So okay, so a question from Vincent Schneck. He says, uh, uh, on average, how long does it take to paint something of that caliber for you? Mm -hmm. I think you spend more time on converting. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> it takes more, more like when I get the idea and then I change and then I cut some parts from that model and from other models. So, so it takes time. I, I started it last year. I think there's already a year, but then slowly adding new characters to the crew. Yeah. And I, I also have ideas for the vehicles and so on. So I'm not pushing it because that's just for myself, just to have like, a, a, it's basically my free time when I don't paint for the collectors or for the companies that we need. So I do those small conversions and then paint just for myself. Okay. So it's, it's all, it's good. Though. I mean, it, would you say that your work is better yeah. when that happens? Um, or, yeah. or is it the same? Is it the same? You just enjoy it a little more if it's your own stuff. It's kind uh, of yeah. It's, 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 but, uh, yeah, it's it's also that. But we have luck with our style that uh, when yeah. we work on commissions or on box arts, we never get um, requests how to paint we just get the figures and they say paint it whatever what yeah because they awesome. need any way to <laughs> yeah, because for, for like if they want something painted from us it will be strange if they request the color scheme or something yeah, because, because they never can imagine yeah can. Because, because it's <laughs> for them it's much easier to say like do your stuff yep. you know you're gonna surprise us so that so far it, it works this way and, and we are happy because of that all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna change it up a bit. We're gonna go to this picture next. This is uh, looks like a couple, and there she's got a big pot of soup or stew. Oh, uh, the dwarfs. Yeah, the dwarfs. Uh, the that dwarfs. is the project we worked on together. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So she. <laughs> I painted the female dwarf. And I painted the <laughs> yeah, the male one, and yeah. I built a whole diorama as well so that there was a lot of building and sculpting we sculpt a lot of but i think the lunch <laughs> yeah <laughs> the soup <laughs> uh okay so now was this uh was this for fun was this for a competition was this a commission like what what was this it, this was a commission the 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 collector just said like i want these two models on diorama and then and then we had to invent the whole connection because when you build a diorama you cannot just put two models you need to build some story yeah. and like right. say what is happening there so, so we sit and talk like hmm maybe he because he looks like he's con constructing something yeah. so i said but he can get hungry at some point so she, she needs to make a lunch or yes. something for the workers <laughs> awesome yeah. so yeah, too. So we had to spend some time in, in really designing the, the idea and make it work and also make it work on Diorama because uh, the the difficult things on Diorama is to have like the whole scene full and to tell the story. You know, you, you can put two characters on them, but if they are too close or too far and there is a gap in between that's an empty yeah. space that are not really good for the composition wise. So there is a lot of those things. So that's why, for example, I, I added some scenery there to complete the whole scene. Yeah, making the composition. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That that's cool. That makes sense. Uh, so we have a question here: Are you more critical of your own work, or of that you do for commission? 
<laughs> we are always critical. We are always critical. <laughs> always critical. <laughs> okay. We, we only like, I, I just, uh, I don't know, I had a conversation with someone. I thought like, I, I always find like mistakes and, and like mistakes and, and things that I don't like. But what I like the most is that every time I look, even the, the oldest works that I had, it always brings me a smile. Mm -hmm. You know, I always look at it and say, oh, that was a fun time when I did that. So that's the way I, I look at the miniature painting. If it was fun for me, if I enjoy it, it's, you know, it, it's good enough. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's fair. We're going to switch gears here and we'll show off another painting or painting, uh, another painted model. It looks like a painting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay questions about this one folks uh, ask away because uh so is this uh one over the other uh who painted this one uh, templar's atonement have... yeah that, that's my box art for for a uh, for a company and it's for the yeah pictures. yeah ah, so oh, I see. so yeah i really enjoy it painting that one. You also have short deadline. Yeah, that, 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 that's also true. Sometimes when you have a short deadline, I painted that in a couple of days. It was be before our travel. To yeah, to ta Taiwan. Taiwan. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I had just a short, I mean, the deadline was long, but because of our travels, I, I decided that I need to finish that before our travels. Because so so open. I sit down and paint it like in a couple of days and I think because of that I, I had more uh, uh, like to be more impressionistic about it mm -hmm. and that's why I enjoy it more now. Maybe if I had longer deadline I would go into polishing some stuff and maybe I would lose the character that I achieved with, with uh, these more free brush strokes that I managed to do. So Morgan Benny asks, uh, my only question is, what is this model from? It's from Galapagos Miniatures. It's a Korean company. Yeah, from South Korea. Okay. And do you know where one gets one of these? Yeah. I'm, I'm they, they have a website. Website, yeah. yeah. Um, I think comment the link to YouTube. <laughs> Do you have a preference between painting minis, busts, or dioramas? Mm. I think I enjoy the most, like I like busts because you can do more detailing, but I, I like also small 28 millimeters models because you can finish them faster, so you can bring your idea faster and then you can move on to another one, mm -hmm. not to get stuck too long on, on one model. So I guess I prefer smaller ones but when it comes to painting and explaining and, and holding classes it's much better if, if you have a space to show the technique okay yeah that for me that I, I really think the, the favorite paint are the miniatures and like 28 scale is always the preferred one at least we, we still have eyesight for that maybe later <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to your Instagram page and I'm going to show everyone uh, all the stuff that I find there. <laughs> okay, here we go. You guys ready? So I'm scrolling in your Instagram page and okay, look at this. Come on. What? All right, so it looks like a Viking uh, fending off this massive lizard. Well, yeah, th that that's the last project we did together. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ah, um, oh, man, just nuts. Like, okay, it's hard to tell how big that is from the picture. I wonder if there's other. This this, this one is uh, bigger. It's, uh, it's 75, seventy-five scale. So, but but it, it's it's a big piece, a uh, heavy resin piece that you can really. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's cool. Okay, and. It, if I were to ask how long it took, you'd probably a silly question. Uh, so, well, yeah, I start, Marco started the, the project a long, a long time ago, but then I couldn't finish it. So I decided like, Alexander, can you join us? I so said, we can, I want we to paint it. <laughs> so we, so like, we need to finish this one because I, I, I like how it goes so far and I want to finish it to help me. 
Okay, so I do have a question, though. The question is, uh, what is the thought process uh, uh, that goes into the color choices? Because I think every single color is represented here, if I'm not mistaken. I, I can't see a color that doesn't exist. Yeah, but you have like dominant cold and warm. So blues and, and reds are pretty much dominant. Yes. So, so every time we have some piece, even though it have all this spectrum of colors, there is uh, always few that are really dominant. And then the other ones are just yes, there to, to the give others. the richness yeah. of the piece. And also there is a lot of mixes of paints. So all the tones used, they're mm -hmm. a mix of maybe few colors yeah. So, as you can see, for example, on the dragon, there is green, but there is green in many, many tones, and there is blue in many tones, there is yeah. red in many tones, more pastel, more saturated, more dark, more cold, more warm. There's so much. Well, because uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but I'm just in the lower part. Uh, I guess mm -hmm. it, it would, like this green section here, which I say green, but really there's like thousands of greens in there. Uh, and then there's a bit of looks like turquoise and mm -hmm. yellows. It, it, it's just it's nuts because it's so many different shades. So how often are you choosing different colors to add to the piece? Is it basically it looks like almost as if every brushstroke is a different shade? Yeah, well, we have a, a huge wet palettes. Okay. Yeah. And we have uh, always like the, the primary color, colors and, and some different tones that we want to have a dominant, like very vibrant feel to it. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if we want some stronger orange, we have that separated. And then we mix all the time, all the tones, and then adding and switching the location. So, for example, if, if I'm working now on, on the face, on the head, or the armor, I want just focus on that part. I will go maybe add that tone also somewhere on, on the legs or somewhere on his shoulder, depending on the model. So it's it's always like that. Basically, basically like a canvas paint. You don't really focus only on one detail. But it's also like not only the primaries. It happens many times because we have a lot of things. Mm. And uh, for me also, I see some things and I say, okay, I need to paint with this. I need. I want to mix these two things. For example, this pink and green. I want to see. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of orangey something mm -hmm. I'll get from that and then you decide to paint with that, that stone and for example for this dragon and when you have that uh, turquoise and greens and going to red um, I um, intentionally went to red and orange and pinkish on the knees um, on the inner parts and somewhere where it's more like um, something that I want to re represent more like live Mm -hmm. Like it has more life in itself, more more blood inside because it's liz like lizardy yeah. dragon. Right. So he can have all of these cold tones as well, but maybe on the belly or somewhere mm. you will have reds and maybe some blues from the veins or something and that I... will give me that li liveliness to the creature. <laughs> I, I get it. Actually, looks like the the skin is translucent, and you yeah. you can see it. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna just scroll down here and get some, choose some other. Uh, <laughs> there's just so many. Meet Mini Alexandra. Awesome. <laughs> I was I was actually gonna say, hey, that looks like you, and then it is you. So, so that's funny. Yeah. So th th those are the recent figures from uh, Artis and Guild. Yeah, they, they created mini me and mm. mini Mark. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, they, they, wanted, they asked us if they, if, if they can create the characters based on uh, us. Yeah, so so we help We made them a little backstory. Back, yeah, because they have their own fantasy world. Yeah. And so they they want to put us as a, some kind of wizards, wizards, yeah, spellcasters and stuff. And so that's Artisan own. Guild, you said? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. okay. You got a, you have a link there in this post. Awesome. So I'm going to go up. Uh, let's see. What's this? What? Okay. So it's just a thank you image, but it shows Archeon and uh, another. So where might, where can I find the picture of this other beast? <laughs> yeah, the, the oh, dragon. Somewhere below. I think we send you the, the photo of him. Maybe. 
Yeah, we, we do. But, but it's on Instagram as well. Uh, I'm going to scroll. Oh, hold on. I just got distracted by something else. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. This, ah, that's so cool. Uh, <laughs> I love how it's never just one color. It's never just one green or one <laughs> red or one flesh. It's, man, there's so much. And, okay. So, this one is the, the nightmarish Ma, known as the horror from the ashes. Yeah. Um, so, Okay, so the the I have to ask, like the green there, you got some white mm -hmm. in there. And here's the thing, well, like I I love painting and I I would if I had more time, I would paint more. And mm -hmm. uh, if I didn't make videos, I would paint more. That that's just a fact, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah. and so I I really love this and so going back to the model itself, like the the white. Am I seeing white? Is that what I'm seeing? It's it's actually very bright blue. It's not white, so it's so so very it, light. Blue. It's yeah, blue. it's 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 very light blue. Ah, like. it is, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So when you mix that with green, you get this turquoise, and then when you add more and more, you get this almost white, but it's it's really really bright blue. Yeah. And because of the shadows are are very warm and like reddish, mm -hmm. it really puts the contrast. It looks even lighter. Yeah, that's why it looks so so. So yeah. white. <laughs> yeah. so, so and so contrast that it basically looks wet and, and, and sluzy. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally it does. And so that that's that comes from an understanding like of color theory. Uh and mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> when you're choosing your colors, is it it's gotta be just automatic for you guys when you're mm, when it you're... it's in time it becomes natural, but it's always nice to to like Study the, the basically things around you because they then you can get the inspiration. Like if you just look at uh, I don't know uh, fish or or insects, you can get so many wild ideas that actually work because like butterflies. Uh, we're that weird person that stare at everything outside. <laughs> look at those yeah, even leaves or, or, or everything in the nature. You can really study a lot of colors and how each tone works with different tones so when you when you get that in your mind it, it becomes really automatic when you paint but also when you think about it you, you can see even more colors outside mm. in, in the shadows in the mm. bushes in the grass okay yeah. just everywhere i love that you, yeah you see everything with a painter's eye mm. uh, like this from the dragon huntress uh <laughs> And the armor again, yeah. like just I'm looking at the armor and if I were to say, like, what color is the armor? If someone were to ask me, what color is the armor? I would say oh, yeah, it's, is, so it's, it's metal. So it's metal. Metal, reflect, yeah, <laughs> metal. metal it reflects the ambience. Yeah. So the answer is yes. <laughs> what color is the metal? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, cool. No, it's, it's neat. It's like I'm looking at this is just looking at pure eye candy. Just that's what all this stuff is. Like, like this, uh, this pig warrior looks like, uh, mm -hmm. like a fantasy version of Bebop, but it's not. Luca Comics, uh, sculptor. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to see what it is. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it, it, from from Arabia miniatures. Yeah. Um. It is Arabia miniatures. Uh, the model is people. People, people. Oh, yeah. People, okay. And it's um, no. But for me, it's it's like a trollog from Wheel of Time. <laughs> yeah. <we're... laughs> I love how the on the left side there. I guess it would be his right side. The the shading changes shade. Yeah, yeah because it's it's. Uh, I want to because he, you, you can you can notice that he is very like there is a lot of flash yeah. on him so right. so it it is easier for me when I want to make a focal point of the face I decided to make one side of him more colder so maybe he's standing in some shaded area or maybe in, in this side is more in the forest or depending on his environment so that way I can push the warm tones on his face. Mm -hmm. and have more reds in his face and when you look at that model it will draw your eyes the red will always draw your eyes 
on his face, not not on the rest of the bit. But it's also uh, when we painted, when we started, we painted mostly of uh, 28 millimeter models, mm -hmm. and we get used to work on so many details on the small figures. And then when we switch to do the bigger ones, like this is this is also 75, yeah. but it's a bit smaller because it's a beast something. So uh, you have all that surface, and you need to do a lot of things because when you are used to do a lot of details and mm. things you, you want to give as much of the story to the character as you can so mm. that's why we always have maybe uh, more atmospheres or something more happening that can describe where yeah. this character is and what he is doing or what happened that's so cool <laughs> so cool i love it uh all right let's see <clears throat> uh Do you have a 40K? I'm looking for a 40K mini. Actually, here. I think this is. You got, you got an orc here. <clears throat> oh, we have some. OK, yeah. Yeah, the, oh. uh, that's a, the conversion, yeah. Yeah. So so the, the, the story behind that one is like all of the GW orcs are like, not all, but let's say almost all are always in some battle action poses, very aggressive, you know, always shooting, screaming. So on this piece, I wanted to build an orc that is enjoying a cigar, you know, just, <laughs> just, just something different than, than, than usual. And, and I really got, you know, like uh, that all this background story about the, the orc worker. So he's now on the pose and enjoying a, a uh, a, a cigar uh, but also because we were fascinated with them uh, their building skills like yeah they're creating things that works only if they believe it works so <laughs> yeah. it will work <laughs> i also i also like how your your objects are used like they look like they're worn and used mm -hmm. no matter what it is whether it's armor or clothing or fabric or heck even skin like uh, it just looks like there's like the, I'm looking at the shoulder pad here <clears throat> and there was originally a, a solid color on, on it when it was brand new. I, I imagine. But right now yeah. it's it's faded. It's it's battle torn and it's faded. But yeah. still, you see the original color and you also see like the sun bleached color mm. and the yeah. everything else like. like to achieve that, uh, there's so many colors in there, and just that. Um, and th th that that work, I think it's uh, around two or more years old. Okay. So it, it, it it's it's quite old now, but... but it's good that it's still uh, when you see all the details that you mentioned now, it's it's exactly what why we are painting like that. We're trying to tell a story, so you can you can learn from all these informations mm. on a painting that. Uh, this work is older guy who's yeah. uh, working hard and enjoying the cigar now. <laughs> really need to get 15 minutes of loneliness to just <laughs> smoke and think about the life. <laughs> and and I love how his skin too. Like you look at the green skin. Uh, there's so much. There's so much in there. Uh, <laughs> like okay, it's not green. It's a light green. It's a very light green or a yellow, right? That it's not white. Yeah. Those aren't the highlights. Of, like, and heck, yeah. around his lips, you got this purple around his lips. What's that all about? <laughs> yeah, well, it's inner, inner, inner color. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even like. I I just looked at him like, oh wait, hey, he's got a purple lips. But again, mm -hmm. it's not exactly purple because there's like a lighter purple in there and a darker and a red <laughs> and a everything. Holy, just for his lips. <laughs> And so that, 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 that's one of the favorite parts about the orcs, the, 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 the pace, yeah, like the piece. character is maybe I spend a bit more time on that piece. <laughs> yeah. Like there's just so much character in, in that model and oh, man. Okay. Here, here's age of Sigmar. Yeah. Uh, so this is, uh, Stormcast, just like a typical. It's a female Stormcast. Oh, okay, yeah. And um, cool, like that's just cool. 
because you could tell you could tell like the you know typically they're gold right and mm -hmm. but this looks like it looks like they're fighting in some sort of cathedral dark cathedral mm -hmm. and it's like dawn it's not exactly nighttime yet and the sun's going down like that's that's what the color looks like yeah, it had that the dawn atmosphere colors. And uh, this was a presentation on the private coaching we did uh, mm -hmm. when we traveled to Australia. Okay. Australia. Yeah. And um, uh, we painted, uh, Marco painted one figure, I painted mm -hmm. this one, and the student we worked on painted the third one. And uh, we focused on all of these colors, explaining more and more of how, how we approach to this painting. Yeah. So, yeah, so we this was basically a present, one day. <laughs> good presentation how we approach the painting. So when we set the ambience and then just... So we just st started building, with all the colors. Yeah, and... Building the focal points, the, the highlights, the reflections, and so on. So it's just graduate, like building and building the, the details in. So, so you can see here, it's not everything is finished. Yeah, it's just... Uh... So you can see on maybe on the maze or some on the lower part, it's more like in 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 a Dark. rougher stage. Yeah. So later on comes some some. Uh, but probably I wouldn't go with too much details now mm. because I would focus only on the frontal part because there is also the big shield. Mm. And... Right. Mm. Interesting. That's so interesting. <laughs> no, because like, uh, man, it's funny how just. A simple model well i shouldn't say simple because it's a it's a, a very good model because gw makes fantastic minis but just a a regular model that they create could be made into a story like here's one miniature and you can craft this narrative all around this one mini just because of how you painted it even the colors that you choose like determines their location and the time of day uh <laughs> it's nuts man like it's it's so cool i love it, it it's mm -hmm. Dang. Okay, here's one that sticks out to me. I could do this all day. I'm just like going through your pictures and hey, look at this. Look at this. All right. Uh, That's good. So what is this? I'm trying to look at the uh, gold barack. The uh, we use from yeah. confrontation. Yeah. Yeah. So the, so this is also a good example. Like this is done in a couple of hours. That, okay, hold on. You did this in a couple of hours. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. the previous one is also yeah. all the things. Yeah, all, like this, this one is, I think, around three. It, it actually it took me longer to clean and assemble because it's an old metal mini. Okay. So you have a lot of cleaning and polishing, but painting was quite fast and smooth. Jeez. You can notice on 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 the shoulder pads that I really have a lot of rough brush strokes. But it's not but, yeah, but it's enough to give you the idea of this is metal, this is wood, and, and but the mo most important part is to set this in this ambience that he is like leading his goblins, and so he they just uh, preparing an attack on dwarves, so he is rallying his troops. <laughs> <laughs> but the important is that all uh, all the important details are. Yeah. Even roughly, they're done to the point where it gives mm. enough information, so you had the, didn't yeah. need to, to go into much details on the other parts. Yeah. That's fantastic. So cool. Uh, okay, one more, and then we're gonna go back. Because, uh, <laughs> like I said, I could do this all day. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna scroll to the very top, because that's gonna show your latest stuff, right? Ah, oh, okay. Uh -huh. All right, so that looks like a painting. The way in which that's painted looks like a painting. Wait, which uh, one? This is uh, this time Aradia Miniatures. Let's yeah, see, I'm just reading. Yeah, yeah, so it's like the Viking. <laughs> yeah. Well, that one is also done in <laughs> Australia on, on the... Uh -huh. on because on master class, yeah. yeah on australia we had uh three master classes uh two days for last each. two days yeah, yeah. uh for each and then we we painted a, a lot of things yeah. there Dang. <laughs> so again like this this ambience here is like the the dome 
also, so, but in a different approach, like yeah, the sun from setting. Yeah, from one side. Yeah. And so the focal point being his face, his arm, and the and the blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's that's the mm -hmm. the, the, the. And then you have that really cold shadows mm -hmm. because of the contra light. And yeah, uh, right. And you can notice how with with adding the the warm highlights, it's really uh, draws your attention more than the cold shadows that are pushing and give the depthness of 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 the of the piece. Right. Yeah, totally. And <laughs> and I think that's why it looks like a painting, right? Because it's to to see this level of, uh, I guess just color understanding and 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 shade and light understanding of light be applied to miniatures is is awesome to see it because uh the typical or the the traditional is just uh, you know you you paint a color and you paint a highlight or two mm -hmm. and then you're done right you might do some airbrushing you might get a bit of a shade and then have a couple highlights and then you're done uh mm -hmm. but this is uh, i mean this is this is next level we're looking at I'm looking at the stuff and I'm just like my eyes are tricking me. If, if I were to cut off your fingers there at the bottom, like, hey, look at this painting. What do you think of this painting? What time what time period is this? Oh, it's Renaissance. Nope. It's uh it's a postmodern age. Yeah. yeah, so oh man. Just so cool. Very cool. So okay, we're gonna go back to um let's go back to the uh to you guys just for a moment here. Hold on. Hold on, guys. One second. Okay. So, uh, we are going to do a couple of giveaways uh, because this this is just fun. So, uh, there's a sponsored giveaway, and then there's a giveaway that you guys are offering as well. Uh, and so we will. Uh, why don't we do the sponsored giveaway first, and then we'll we'll end it with your giveaway. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, just to let you guys know who are watching. Uh, uh, Craft World Studios, they are being generous uh, and they are offering a painting session. Uh, and uh, that, that's, that's awesome. So if you're into painting, uh, getting tips from these professional painters is, is just amazing. And thank you for your generosity and offering up your time uh, to, to show the whoever it is, the lucky winner, uh, they get a session with you guys. And that's uh, awesome. So we'll go to that. That'll be the end. We'll, we'll, we'll do that at the end. Uh, the sponsor giveaway uh, today is from... Uh, actually, I'm going to go back to the uh, the picture here. Okay, sponsor giveaway is uh, Battle Foam. So they're giving away a Pack 32 bag, 432 bag. Uh, head on over to their uh, Facebook page. Give them a like. And uh, I'm going to be randomly drawing the winner right now. Okay, so say uh, type in the word uh, battle foam so that you can be entered into the draw so that you can win this bag if you want to win it. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. Uh, type in the word battle foam if you want this bag. So I'll give you guys uh, just a moment there to type stuff in. As you guys are typing that in, I'm going to go back to uh, to you guys yeah. and uh, ask you a couple questions. So first off, uh, very cool. Is this what you like? You guys had mentioned what you went to school for. Are you are you doing this? Is this part time for you guys? Is it full time? Uh, are you guys a commissioned studio? Uh, like what, what we haven't talked about that yet. So let's uh, let the viewers know. Well, we we now we hold classes, yeah. and and now we recently started also Patreon, okay, with the painting tutorials and and different lessons and, and practice. So, uh, the thing where uh, we have as a giveaway, uh, it's a feedback coaching that we also offering through Patreon, mm -hmm. uh, and on Patreon we also offering uh, giving the benefits to our Patreons uh, in a a video content and pdf content it's a lessons trying to, mm. to bring our teaching closer to worldwide 
and and so far we are very happy that people really enjoy this maybe different way of painting yeah. than usual. It's more fun. And, yeah. and there, there is a lot of colors and it is fun. <laughs> <laughs> and also next to that, we, we do commissions, work, commissions and... for, for companies, so for the box arts. And for collectors. And for the collectors like the... For right. gaming as well, but not the, the big armies. Yeah, just. <laughs> so like you're talking about like single models, diorama type of stuff, like uh, kind of the specialty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah even the unit but... yeah but not 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 often yeah very rarely <laughs> so would you say it's uh if uh, the service that you provide is mostly teaching would you say that's accurate mm -hmm. well uh it, it's it's mm -hmm. painting commissions and teaching okay yeah, so both. it's all, all kind of wrapped up in yeah holding classes traveling and, and traveling and this year i mean month ago we started with patreon and uh, now it's the second month we already have a few tutorials yeah, available yeah. and that is also teaching uh through via mm -hmm. so and we hope to after all of this uh, uh, get back to normal again to travel more and yeah. hold more classes in different countries <laughs> okay awesome so we're gonna do the uh we'll do the winner first for battle foam all right, this is a, a random uh, click of the mouse. I'm not looking. It's going to end up right here on Matar86. On uh, It's a Twitch user. Congratulations, Matar86. You are the winner of the Battle Foam Pack 432 bag. So uh, send me a message here on Twitch. Uh, just to, uh, send me a, a whisper. To say I am the winner, I won the battle foam bag. So send it to me on Twitch just so I know. Um, and I'm gonna write down your name so I don't forget. Okay. And then now for you guys. Okay. So this is for you. So what words should people type in so that uh, they could enter to win uh, a session with you guys? Painting session, coaching session. It's an appropriate mm -hmm. word. Craft world. How about that? They type in craft world. Yeah, craft world is perfect. Yeah. Okay. So type in craft world if you want, if you'd like a session with Alexandra and Marco. Uh, and uh, take advantage of it. Pepper their brains. Pick their brains with all that uh, colorful knowledge that they have. So uh, just for, so you guys know, uh, it's all random for uh, who's going to win, whether you're on Twitch or YouTube or Facebook, it doesn't matter. Uh, you have an equal chance. So just wherever, however you're watching this, just type in the word craft world. <laughs> I'm laughing because of some of the people who are typing the word craft world. <laughs> but hey, that's cool, right? Yeah. And you know who I'm talking about, uh, whoever's yeah. uh, listening to this right now. You know who you are. Yeah. But it's all random, so it doesn't matter. So if you happen to win, you happen to win. Uh, yeah. All right, I'll give you guys another moment. Uh, sometimes it takes a while. Who knows how long it takes for internet to catch up? Yeah. Type in the word craft world to be entered to win a session, a painting session with uh, these fine folk. Okay, I think we have about a dozen here. Okay. So let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. 
for this one because there's fewer I'm going to do a a random number generator I think that I think that'd be fun Just give me a moment, guys. Okay, between 1 and 11. All right, check this out. Generate. That's not what I wanted. That is spam. Generate 11. Okay. So... That is uh, Keza Stanislav Aurora. Congratulations. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, so that's a Facebook user. So um, actually, I think it's best to uh, message you guys there, right? For that. So what's the, what's the best way to contact you? So uh, Facebook, Instagram, or email, we check everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if it's a... Uh, uh, user from Facebook, it's easiest to uh, send us message on Profro Studio page on Facebook. Okay, yep, that makes sense. And uh, just as a as a general uh, contacting you guys, like uh, where can people, uh, what do they need to type, and where where can they find you? Um, yeah, yeah, just a just a Prof, reg Studio. Yeah, regular message on Facebook Profro Studio Facebook page. Okay. Is there one place that uh, that you use more than another? Like your Instagram is pretty big, so uh, would you do you use yeah. that more than Facebook? The same as Facebook? The same, I think. It's about the same. A bit more Instagram, a bit more, but uh, every content we put it goes to Instagram and Facebook regularly. Yeah. Okay, so it's the same. All right, awesome. Well, thank you guys for. Uh, being part of the show today and uh, allowing me to show off some of your work and uh, sharing this with the community. Uh, if you guys are watching this uh, after the fact, uh, leave your comments below. Let us know what uh, you guys think uh, of the artwork and uh, give these guys a like and a subscribe and, uh, and a follow because uh, they certainly deserve it with their hard work that they've put into the stuff that they do and, and uh, what they're contributing to the community. I was mentioning to you guys before, and, and I'll say it again because I, I really believe this. I, I believe that artists, um, in particular artists, add so much to the community because there's, I mean, first off, there's artwork, right, in all of its forms uh, on the miniatures. And then there's also the, the knowledge and the skill that you uh, that help others develop, which is, which is awesome. So that's just continue doing what you're doing. Uh, it's, yeah. it's great. Um, thank you and thank you for everything you're doing as well yeah. we we both yeah. really enjoyed it for yeah. years you, you're and doing it for for quite a while like <laughs> I, I don't know more than 15 years or how long yeah we're going uh, on we're going on 13 years now so yeah 15, yeah yeah so uh, thank you for everything you're yeah. doing <laughs> very welcome thank you thanks for being guests uh and thank you guys happy wargaming stay tuned next week uh for next week's episode